It has been over a month since I've been in front of the camera and well, of course I need to mention this massive um, thing and that's me mentioning it. So it is crazy to think that the entry level 3D printer market has gone from this to this in only eight years. But it is also crazy to see that Prusa used to be the entry level 3D printer. But that was all the way back in 2016. And now in 2024, Prusa is calmly sitting in the premium category. The Prusa i3 Mark II retailed for 700 US dollars back in 2016. And if you adjust that for inflation, that is sitting at roughly $906 today. And guys, we're talking about an entry level product. For that price, I can nearly get a P1S AMS combo. So given what I just said and the fact that we have an Ender 3 V3 KE on the table, we're obviously talking about the entry level market. Now, if you are interested in the history on 3D printing, I will be doing a deep dive and having a good discussion on that posted to this channel in the somewhat near future. But for today, we're gonna keep this grounded and focused on the entry level market. And more specifically, of course, the Ender 3 V3 KE, that's a tongue twister. So this machine is gonna come in at roughly $250, depending on if you can score a deal, but that low price doesn't mean that it skips a beat in terms of the technology that Creality is packing into the machine. So the KE is the Clipper edition of the Ender 3 V3, and it is going to come with a full suite of fully automated calibration features, and those algorithms, honestly, they work quite well. So I'm obviously not gonna claim they're the best because we have an X1 Carbon sitting here and they're not the best, but for $250, they are damn good. The KE has a linear rail on X, it has rods on Y, and if you stick this thing in an enclosure, it's very easily gonna be able to print ABS. And of course, the prints that come off of this machine are easily as good, if not better, than any of its competitors in the same price category. But before we get too far into this video, guys, I briefly want to mention my Discord channel that most of you guys probably don't even know exists. We have quite a few daily users, but we're greedy and we definitely want more. I plan to have a giveaway of filament, accessories, or maybe even 3D printers themselves, but the problem is before we do that, I need to have more active contributors. So right now we're at roughly 300 members and if we can get to 500 by my birthday, there's going to be a massive giveaway. You can find the Discord link in the description and well, you should go join now because Guess I said so. So now Creality definitely wants me to do a full review of the KE, but I'm not gonna do that. It's an entry level printer and I don't really think that's necessary. They want me to turn you into a fanboy, but that's not exactly my goal here. I definitely think if you have a $300 budget that this should probably be your go-to option, but I'm hands off. That's all I'm gonna say. But what I really wanna do in this video is talk to you about how easy 3D printing in 2024 has become because when I started printing back four or five years ago, 3D printing definitely was not a brainless hobby. Back when I started 3D printing, which honestly wasn't that long ago, printers didn't have automatic bed leveling by default. Clipper existed, but it wasn't really well known or used, and most printers were using the absolutely horrific 16x2 liquid crystal display that shipped on pretty much every printer that was like the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro. Basically, the point I'm trying to make is that printers were difficult to use and I couldn't just simply recommend 3D printing to any random stranger that I met on the streets. The general 3D printing user experience was just overall not very good. 
But with new features like the KE's Vibrant Touch Display, it's very easy and very obvious to know what model you're about to print or say what temperature you're about to set the nozzle to or pretty much any other action you're trying to perform. With factory integrated BL Touch and bed meshing capabilities, users don't have to go source a BL Touch, install a BL Touch, and then install BL Touch firmware. PEI Flex plates either used to not even be available or they were a $50 upgrade, but now PEI Flex plates come standard and stock on almost every single printer. 3D printers have come a long way in just four small years, but it's important to note that the features I'm mentioning and the features I've talked about so far aren't only features limited to the Ender 3 V3KE. I legitimately believe that any Joe Blow on the street can unbox a printer similar to this one, build the machine, browse printables, and print a model in 30 minutes and have no issues whatsoever. 3D printing no longer requires an engineering degree or an upbringing in STEM. The creative brained individuals that put oil on canvas or throw clay on a wheel could easily wake up one day, buy a printer, and enjoy a new hobby. And this thought is totally mind boggling to me because I know where we came from just a few years ago and I was always banging my head against a wall. Actually though, the day that I'm most waiting for is when I can load paint into a machine and do their job as well. But in all honesty, gone are the days of a three hour Benchy that just looks like the Flying Dutchman grew a beard. And for this B-roll right now, I tried really hard to print a saggy stringing Benchy, but I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because nowadays, printing a bad model is more difficult than printing a good model. The slicing algorithms and the printing hardware have just become way too freaking good. So let me level with you for a moment. All of the printers that I'm focusing on in this video are the printers that cost between 200 and 300 US dollars. Of course, the KE is smack in the middle around 250. And yeah, when you put the KE up against the $1,000 Prusa Mark IV or the $1,300 X1 Carbon, you clearly have a lesser quality product. But let's be real here. For those of you that aren't super nerds like me, is it really worth spending a thousand US dollars on a product that you're only gonna use about once or twice a month? And the answer to that is probably no. So that's where these entry level printers find value. And if the KE is a product of 2023, I definitely, Definitely cannot wait to see what 2024 has to offer. The 3D printing market is only going up and it's gonna be insane to see what level of quality and what technology 2024 has to offer. Guys, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. And if you loved it, like it. And if you like it, subscribe for more. Do be sure to ring the bell below and please check out one of these awesome videos on screen. Now, I think they're right here or right here. I, I don't really know. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you are interested in picking up the KE or any other entry level printer that I recommend, I'm gonna have all those links in the description down below and some of them might have a discount code attached to them. 